Turn your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter number 17, verses 1 to 6. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Verse number 2. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in Kerith, Riven, east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kerith, Riven, east of Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm sure from the scripture that I've read, you would know what I'm going to speak to you. At the brook, experience. I want to title my message as Learn to Live on God. Everybody say, learn to live on God. There are two characters that you see in 1 Kings chapter number 16 and we see in 17. Both of them are princes on their own. You know, we have King Ahab and Elijah, the prophet. This story begins, you know, with now Elijah the Tishbite. All the prophets in the Bible would always mention as the son of so and so. We do not have any records in the Bible directly that whose son is Elijah was. And we don't have any idea which tribe he is from. The prophets in the Bible, they heard from the Lord and they wrote. They heard from the Lord and they spoke. Elijah is a prophet. He heard from the Lord and he acted. There was no book as the book of Elijah, but we have a lot to learn from this young man, Elijah the prophet. The very word Elijah means Yahweh is God. And he lived all his life to prove who God is, all through his life probably. You know, from ever since, as an young man, he started serving the Lord. That is what we could see from this portion of the Bible. We also, every prophet of God who talked about, they always connect or touch the base to Elijah, the prophet. We see even in the New Testament, we see he had a great privilege of meeting the Lord Jesus Christ and the greatest prophet Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. And we also see Elijah was something unique that as Enoch walked with God, he walked with God all his life, his death was not mentioned in the Bible. He was taken up to heaven, alive. Amen? He was truly a man who heard from the Lord and he acted on the word of the Lord. Here we see God told him, you know, he says, he goes to the king and he confronts the king, because of his sin, 
against the king Ahab was one of the most wicked kings ever lived in the land of Israel. He, he killed two of his sons and laid the foundations of the cities. And he built, you know, on the cost of his son, he made his dynasty, his kingdom. He was a man who worshipped idols and he offered human sacrifices. And uh, if a king, the leader of the nation, if he sinned against God and he misleads the entire nation to sin against God, the wrath of the Lord came upon. And uh, that is why God sent Elijah to speak to the king Ahab and confront him saying, what you are doing is wrong unless and until you turn away from your wicked ways. So he goes on the first verse that we see in 1 Kings chapter 17. He goes to the king and he confronts saying, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the, in the next few years except at my word. Very strong confrontation and a bold challenge before the great wicked king of Israel. If he could offer sacrifice of his very own son, then nobody else matters to him. Am I right? At one command, he could easily kill Elijah and offer him as a sacrifice to his idols. King, knowing the character of the king Ahab, he goes right into the palace into the very lounge of the king and he says, I am challenging you. Except my word, there's not going to be rain, not just few days, next few years. And imagine, after which I would expect a great revival. If I was Elijah, I would be expecting a great congregation after making this confrontation because I, I am starting my ministry. The ministry of Elijah starts right in verse number 1. The next thing, verse number 2, very interesting. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, verse number 3. Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kerith Ravine, east of Jordan. Oh my God. Lord, I thought you have prepared me a great congregation because I have just started a ministry for me to preach to a congregation of the whole nation of Israel, but you are saying to me, your ministry part one is over, now go back and hide yourself. Go and hide. Why? Why he has to hide him? If he can go himself and show or present himself to the very lounge of the great king Ahab, and boldly challenge him. God had protected him. Going into the very palace of Ahab. And come alive. If that was God can do. Why did God ever ask him to go and hide himself? We got to think about it.
God tells him to go and hide by the brook. Kerit's experience comes to every Christian at some point of journey. Some of us have experienced already. Some will be experiencing soon. There is going to be a moment in our life where God would ask us to hide ourselves from all our activities wherever God leads us. We need to listen to the voice of the Lord and be still in such places. When God closes the door on things where you most wanted to do, you want to do something for God. You're all set. You're all prepared. But God says, it's not my time. Amen? It's not my time. You may be a great preacher, great worship leader, great musician. Everybody say, listen to the voice of the Lord. When the Lord asks you to hide yourself I am leaving this place. I am going elsewhere. Elsewhere where people will use me. Don't ever say such words. Don't ever say such word. I want every one of us to understand God is at work in the brook of Kerith, as much as he will be in the Mount of Carmel. Everybody knew what had happened in the Mount of Carmel. God, in a spectacular way, glorified his name, brought fire from heaven, and uh, he accepted their sacrifice and proved that he was the true God in front of all the prophets of Baal and Asherah. And the whole congregation, the whole nation bowed before God. He, as much as he will be in Carmel, God was with Elijah right in the Kerith brook. When God closes the door on things that you want the most, listen to the voice of the Lord. What I'm going to share with you is inspirational. It was ministering to me that I want to share with you. Three things that I want to share with you. Number one, God hid him. God led him. God fed him. God hid Elijah. God led Elijah. God fed Elijah. The place, the place, Kerit, means to cut off, to cut down. God has cut off Elijah from the public view so that he might cut him down to size. Just yesterday, he told the king of Ahab, saying, Do you know how great my God 
Next to God, it's me. I'm great. Without my word, there's not going to be rain, not even a dew. Early morning when you get up, you will see small drops of water on the leaf, on the grass edge. Even that you will not be able to see. Next few years. So you must understand how powerful I am. Now God says, go hide yourself. Go hide yourself. Kerit is a place where God withholds what you wanted the most. There are times that you wanted the most in your life. God may say, hold on. We see in this whole chapter of 17, from Kerit, the Lord says, now go to Zarephath. Another place of hiding. He says, I'm going to be. From one place of hiding to another place of hiding, where nobody knows him. If he comes to Jezreel, everybody knows him. His house is there. He lives there very much. And the Lord says, don't go to Israel. Don't go to your own country people. Go to Zarephath of Sidon. And there, stay there. Another place of hiding. After a brook experience, God takes him to a congregation of two. Mother and son. For three years, he has to only minister to these two people. Keep feeding the word of the Lord, strengthening them, telling them who God is, what God can do. Probably Elijah was the first missionary who went out of his own people to share who God is. As an evangelist, as a missionary, God took him and gave him two member congregation for three years. If I were him, I would leave ministry and start a business or go and work somewhere. Only two people for three years after training myself, I was all alone right at the brook and now only two people, mother and son to get up in the morning, go to sleep, morning, afternoon, night. Only one, you know, congregation with two people where he had to be there. God took him. It is a face. If your doors are not opening, Friends, you are welcome to Kerith. You are you going through an experience of Kerith. God will take you to Kerith before he takes you to Mount Carmel. Somebody say Amen. You are going to be hiding yourself at Kerith. Because God is going to take you to Mount Carmel. For which there is going to be a three plus years of hiding yourself. Even in the Bible we see Moses was in the wilderness. Probably three fourths of his life. Three fourths of his life Moses 
was preparing to lead the people of Israel. At the age of 40, he ran away from Egypt. At the age of 80, God called him to come for ministry. Hallelujah. Three-fourths of his life was only on preparation because there is going to be a great exit from the land of Egypt. A miracle that could never happen for past 400 plus years are going to be happening by the leadership of Moses. God prepared him. God was spectacular. In a spectacular way, God used Moses opening the Red Sea, bringing plagues, bringing manna from heaven, giving meat, water, you name it, God provided through Moses. For which he had to wait for 80 long years of hiding himself, not showing who he was. Probably to us, Moses wasted his prime of his life. You know, prime of his life is wasted. That's what you and me think. God took him at the age of 40, to shepherd the sheep in the mountains. He was shepherding, he was after the sheep. God took David, a great king. His preparation was not in front of Goliath or his Stands in front of Saul, the king. His preparation was in the wilderness. When he was hiding himself, probably God took him alone to prepare for a great leadership. Amen. Apostle Paul, he was one of the educated disciples of Jesus. Ever in the Bible. He was under the feet of Gamaliel, one of the greatest scholars of his time. Learned under him scriptures. He was a Pharisee to the core. He learned scriptures by heart. He would know every part of the Bible, you know, as much as a, a, a scribe. Or a priest should know the scripture that much he was well versed. After he had an encounter uh, uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ on the way to Damascus, the Lord led him to hide himself in the wilderness of Arabia for three long years. Before he started his ministry. Three years, Lord, after calling him to be a missionary to the Gentile. Three years, he excluded himself into the wilderness of Arabia. And he prepared for the greatest ministry. I want to tell you again. If your doors are not opening, friends, hold on. Hold on. When God, the lesson that we learn, when God chooses to hide you for a time, which means He is preparing for you for a greater purpose. If God chooses you to, to hide you for a time, 
is preparing you for a greater purpose. So don't overdo yourself. Amen? You may be the greatest preacher. You may be the greatest leader. Probably people are not singing well. People are not playing well. The pastor is not preaching well. Whatever complaints you may have, you may be a better preacher, better singer, better evangelist, great prayer warrior. If God has asked you to hide yourself, listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen? When God finished with you, probably many of you are waiting for your dose of opportunity to come. And you might say, how long, Lord, should I wait at the brook? God would say to you, my time is not come. You may feel that you are all set to move from this place. But God says, there are still, you need to learn by being in the presence of the Lord. There is no cooking. There is no cooking, no work. All that you need to do is every day pray, pray, and pray. Imagine all alone if you are left in a wilderness. For a, such a long time, what would go through in our heart? There's only one person. There's no mobile phones, no Facebook, no internet. Not even a book or a Bible to read by yourself. The only thing that you can do is talk to the Lord. Only work that God gave him. Talk to him. God resized Elijah at the brook. Second thing, God led him. Everybody say, God led him. The scripture says, when the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kerith uh, Raven, east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook and, have, I, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. God told him where to go. God leads his people one step at a time as we walk in obedience to the Lord. Amen? If to some you know where you are heading, to some you may not know what is your future is. For all of us know, we are going to be with the Lord. How many of you have the faith? Amen. One day we are going to be in the presence of, that is our destination. But probably you can plan many things in your life. But only the plans of God will come into action. In reality, you will see the plan of God, the purpose of God being fulfilled in all of our life. If God had told Elijah, Elijah, I'm going to take you to Mount Carmel for you are going to be challenging the prophets of Baal. He would have said, Lord, why don't I go near to that Mount Carmel and stay there. 
we are asking me to go to the brook and then to Zarephath. That too, and not a rich man's house. If you are sending me to Sidon, why don't you send me to the king of, you know, uh, Samaria, or king of the, this palace, that palace? Anyway, all this while I was eating, the food was given by the ravens. Now at least I will have a good meal at the at the at the table of a great kings or men of honor. Or at least a rich man who has enough to serve. You are sending me to a brook, then to a widow's house. What a place. But, but that is what God wants us to go through. Amen? God leads his people one step at a time. Everybody say one step at a time. It is not clear the next step. You may say, I do not know what to do next. Your next step is not clear. It could be you have not yet finished what God is calling you to do already. I say it again. If the Lord is not making your next step clear, it could be probably you have not yet finished what God is calling you already. You are still need to be in the at the brook. You still need to be at the house of the widow. Yes, there's going to be a brighter day. Yes. There is going to be a spectacular day. But the timing of the Lord is the perfect timing. Move forward with all that God has given you now. Then trust Him for the next thing in life. Amen. Don't grumble yourself. How long should I be at the brook? How long should I be all alone? How long should I have only two member congregation? Elijah, for you to be in front of thousands, probably the whole nation, is still not the time for me. You may be prepared, but according to me, you are still not finished. Your quota. Move forward with the Lord's voice. Somebody said like this Every leader wants to lead. Every leader wants to lead, but all the leaders lead on God's time. Every leader wants to lead, but all the leaders lead on God's time. If you see anybody on leadership, it is God who placed them there. No matter how bad they are, how worse they could be, they may not be performing well. Don't Judge them wrongly because it is God. Every leader wants to lead, but all the leaders who are leading, they are leading on God's time. The scripture says, promotion comes from the Lord. If God has elevated you a position where you are going to act, be faithful in the responsibility that God has given. If not, God may replace you with somebody else. When God has elevated you to such position of not being faithful in the position, in the leadership, in the responsibility, God has given 
and to you. God spoke directly to Elijah probably on this day. We have the word of the Lord and the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and God's word is there with us to guide us today. Probably during the time of the prophets, they must have heard the voice of the Lord audibly. But now, we have the word of the Lord and the Spirit of God. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen? All the time you may not hear God's, I'm not, you know, a disqualifying that God is not speaking audibly. Yes, God does. God do speaks even today audibly, but not to everyone. To some, in a spectacular way, God speaks to them. All the time we don't need to hear an audible voice of the Lord when there is the written word of God for us to go forward in our day-to-day -day life and to confirm what God is leading you what God is leading us in our life, we have the Spirit of the Lord. We have the Holy Spirit to confirm, yes, it is God who is leading you in your way. Somebody say, Amen. God hid Elijah. God led Elijah. Number three, God fed Elijah. Amen. God provided the people of Israel manna from heaven. Now, there is no manna from heaven, but a raven is bringing food to Elijah at the brook. God says, Elijah, I have prepared a place for you. Amen? How many of you believe that? God said, Elijah, I have prepared a place. A place for you that is a brookside. Second is the house of a widow. A place that God has prepared. Now, that is where you are going to have your meal. If I, would, if I was Elijah, I would ask every day to the Lord, Lord, anyway, you are sending the raven. Why not send me different, different food? You know, one day biryani, one day idli, one day dosa, one day chapati. You do not know from where, he's, where the raven is getting all this food, but I know, you know, the food is coming. I would want something different. But very interesting, first of all, you got to know, ravens are a scavenger birds. Scavenger birds, from where they do they get meat every day, morning and evening, bread and meat, bread and meat, morning and evening. It was not uh, very delicious as we could probably the, the, the food in whatever you can think, but it is good enough. It was enough to survive every day that he was at the brook. Amen? Somebody say hallelujah. Don't, 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 uh, you know, uh, feel bad. See, I cannot eat that food, this food, that food, you know. All this food, and we can only see pictures. Don't worry. God is leading you. God is providing you for this day. Say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may not be eating every day pondered yam. <laughs> yeah. 
you may not be eating spaghettis every day but god is leading you god is providing food for every day of your life praise the lord hallelujah be glad no matter who brings the food as long as is edible and it makes you to keep going sundry lord you are sending me to a brook why not the river by itself a brook will any time get dry but the river will still go on but the lord this is the place of hiding this is a place of provision i am pro- my food is only you are going to get at the brook side not at the river side somebody say hallelujah when god gives you you know one pastor friend used to say like this where he leads me i will follow what he gives me i will follow you know don't say no 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 i don't need this i don't need i don't need i don't need i don't need what he gives you for that day say praise the lord and eat whether is gluten without gluten or fat without fat when there is lavish don't eat everything and you know end up going to the hospital you know to treat yourself eat what is needed for you so that you can live healthy for a long time hallelujah here we see enough to survive everybody say enough to survive sometimes some of you may be going through such phases in your life it's not lavish it's not very great spread of food but the food that you eat is enough to survive is enough strong enough to work every day to day work is enough for you to see tomorrow the water be it water be the meat or the bread it is god who provides hallelujah somebody say praise the lord next he goes to the widow's house in widow's house there's only one menu bread not even meat bread what is breakfast today is breakfast bread what is bre- what is um, for lunch bread and the night bread 3 years 3 years closer to 3 years he only ate bread and he survived somebody say hallelujah what a way that god leads us it is possible for god to use anyone to feed you whether it's a raven or a widow it is god who provides amen hallelujah shout a louder hallelujah, hallelujah. raven widow widows widows food i have to eat do you know who am i i have challenged the great king ahab without my words does not going to be rain and for me ravens for me this widow's bread 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 every day you may go to sleep thinking tomorrow will be a brighter day for 3 years or 2 plus years you only had that but it is god who provided him hallelujah another thing raven is an unclean bird i said god may give you his word god can use anyone to feed you every evangelist 
every pastor, every man of God that you see feeding you may not be the righteous people that you think. One day you'll find out even him fallen. The person who led you to accept Jesus as your personal savior, he has left the faith itself. People who brought you into conviction, who made you to involve in the ministry, they have left the ministry. Because something is terribly wrong with them. Don't worry. God can create a genuine faith through a ministry of a fake believer. God can create a genuine faith through a ministry of a fake believer. It is the gospel that saves, not the evangelist that saves. That part of the day, that month, that year, you needed a word of the Lord. It came through that man of God, so-called man of God. It is the word that boosted your faith. The word, the faith, the gospel that saved you. It's not the person who speaks the gospel. Don't ever be confused. How can man who led me into the ministry, into the, you know, led me into God Himself? He has left. It might happen to any one of you. But believe it is God who fed you at the right time. Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise the Lord. God hid Elijah. God led Elijah. God fed Elijah. I do not know how many of you are waiting at the brook this morning. If you are waiting at the brook, you're waiting for the next move. But the doors are not opening. Don't get disappointed. Wait for the Lord's time.